Hey guys, I absolutely love this kind of content where I ask a question on the community tab and I make it into a poll, you know, to see the different kind of thinking, the different kind of answers we get based on this uh, question. And I try to, as much as possible, not phrase it into as like, hey, there's one answer and one answer only. And if you don't answer it right, you bad, me good. No, because many times I ask a question, I thought the answer is one thing right so that's what i think the appropriate answer but it turns out to be different because one of you will call me out and says hey hussein you you forgot one tiny thing that kind of renders your whole question moot <laughs> right so i love absolutely love this question because not only we learn together but we i personally learn more uh, stuff here as we explore these kind of things today's question is a database question so get your dbs ready table t with three integer fields a b and c we have one table with three fields a b and c it's they're all integers for simplicity here a has a primary key clustered index focus on the word clustered and primary key right although this is kind of a redundant statement you know because most primary keys are clustered not all databases follow this postgres is a good example there are no primary keys in Postgres, everything is a secondary key, right? Uh, well, you can literally type a primary key, you know, but it's treated as a secondary key. So the, the keys, the values point to the row directly, right? And the secondary indexes also point to the row directly. But this is very critical to understand because that kind of depends which is the most appropriate answer. It really depends on the database. B has a secondary index, right? So usually secondary indexes point to the primary key or point to the table and, and the answer differs, right? So the question is, which query is more likely? And I try to ask as much as well, more likely to be the most efficient here. So based on kind of understanding what is, what is going on behind the scenes, and that's our goal here to understand the queries we send, to understand the code we're writing, right? So as much as possible. Sometimes we fail, right? So all indexes are B plus trees. Try to be as, as specific as possible, right? And here's the fir first choice. Select star from T where A is between 50 and 50,000. So we're querying on the A field, which has an index, which has the primary key index right? and a cluster index to be specific. Select star from the second one, the second choice. Select star from T where B is between 50 and 50,000. So now we're querying on the B, which also has an index. Right? And the final one, select star from T, where C is between 50 and 50,000. And I specifically put that large values because I wanted to pull large amount of data as much as possible to see the, to feel the difference in the query. So how about we start with the kind of easiest one that we can eliminate? Select star from T, where C is between 50 and 50,000. Most of the time, well, querying on a field that doesn't have an index will say hey uh doesn't have an index so i have to do a table scan right i should have mentioned here you might say the answer could be c why because hey the table is almost empty you can you can you can say this and the answer would be c right because the table is empty so it's faster to scan the heap directly if it's almost empty. If there is like three rows, hey, just go pull the only page in the heap and read it. So the answer could be C in this case, right? But obviously, if the, if the table is large, millions of rows, the answer is not C because <laughs> scanning the whole table, you need an index. If the, if the table is almost empty, the planner itself will scan the table directly. So it's not worth it going to the index because it's more expensive to crack open the data structure that is the index. Pull the pages all of the index. Try to scan things only to find out that there isn't anything, right? And then take the hit to scan the index only to find out there is nothing. And uh, you just waste time. So it's actually slower to scan the index. There's an overhead if the table is empty, right? 
And that's why database statistics really matter here. You really need to know, why am I not centered? You really need to know how, how large and how, what's the statistics possibility of the value that I'm scanning. So if your stats are out of date, right? The planner is, is, is screwed because like it cannot make proper decisions. You need to update your statistics. There are command for every database, I believe, to update statistics. Right. I'm assuming that. I only know the command in Oracle and SQL Server. I'm not sure Postgres has that command to physically update the statistics. I believe it does it automatically, which is expensive, obviously, to update the statistics, right? All right, let's pick the second one. So we talked about C, the third answer. Could be true, right? Could be the most efficient, right? If the table is empty, but if the table is not empty, it's really large, then C is not the answer. Three, three is not the answer. Querying on C, which doesn't have an index, is not an answer in this case. B. So if I'm scanning the B, which is a secondary index, between values between fifty and fifty thousand, right? Let's assume that the table is large. I'm going to use the index. The secondary index will as assume first it's a, it's a primary key base database such as mysql the secondary index will point to what to the primary keys right so in this case every entry that i find in the b uh, index between 50 and 50000 that is a candidate but guess what i don't i don't want values in b i want the entire thing i want a b and c I want the three columns. B does not have the three columns. It only have the B, obviously, and that's when we're scanning, right? And so I need A and C. So if this is a MySQL, we're going to break this into two points. If this is a MySQL, a SQL server, I believe an Oracle as well. Oracle, I'm not sure about that. But if it's a MySQL, definitely, then the secondary key is point to the primary key so at the end of the scan and this is the b plus three so you're gonna get a nicely tucked in values together the range scans are beautiful for b plus trees we talked about this in my database course right so you immediately you're gonna find 50 to fifty thousand, very quick <laughs> i wish that's that's the end if that was the end if you're doing a count maybe you're gonna get away with it that would be fast right but if if you're that if that's it but no you have to pull back the values and take the list of keys which are what now they are list of primary keys take that which are completely random right fifth the, a value of b50 could be the last row in the table right and it could be a one in the middle it could be one in the beginning so it's gonna be all over the place so now you have to take these values, probably the database was going to sort them, and then scan the A primary key index. And that's going to be expensive because of the randomness, right? So you're going to see some gaps. They're going to be, the database was going to do some sorting. And then eventually it's going to scan the primary key index and find the values. And once it finds the values, because it's a clustered index, the row is in the index itself so we're gonna find c free of charge if you will right there is no additional jump to the heap because the primary key if you will is the heap in this case right uh, it, it sits on top of the heap points to the pages of the heap where the values are so they are clustered together a, a cluster index if you don't know guys it's a it's it's built around uh, the uh, values are built around that index. So if you insert the value and A is 1 and then another value 2, 3 or 4, the database will put them ni nicely into the same page. So now if you insert a value of 1000, that's going to go into another page, 1001 next to it. If you insert a value of 10, it goes back to the same page. It's not uh, versus unclustered index or table. 
that will be basically oh, you send a one and then a thousand and then a two thousand and then a three that's going to be the same order you insert almost depends on the transactions when which one committed first and you cannot guarantee the order of the transaction obviously at that lower level when it goes when it comes to the actual insertion of the table so they are gonna, they're going to be random that's getting unclustered right and that's basically it a uh, cluster index forces the row to go into the exact page to be clustered together the values could be clustered and that you can argue that is actually slow in this case that is slower because now you need to find where to put the row right versus default and postgres you just insert at the end it's just almost like an append only right so now we talked about this in the case of mysql I'm going to scan the B secondary index. So that's one index scan. You can argue it's fast because you're searching for values that are consecutive to each other, 50 to 50,000. And then you got to get a bunch of random A values. This is the primary keys, right? That's in case of a MySQL. Now you turn, turn around and do another scan in the primary index. So that's two index scans right and the second one will be slower than the first one because of the random nature obviously so you're gonna do, 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 do you're gonna be jumping all over the place uh, you might the database might do multiple scans right because it, it would be ranges different ranges and right? as a result so that's that's not optimal i think right um so let's take the case they're still in the second answer here let's take the case where we're in the a postgres database Postgres, we're scanning the B index. It's a truly secondary index, so it points directly to the table. So now I'm scanning 50 to 50,000. Again, that's blast fast. Blast fast, that rhymed. So now we're searching everything between 50 and 50,000. What do we get? We get a bunch of row IDs or tuple IDs, they call them, Postgres. And now we have all the rows that we can get and the database can choose here to do an index scan or a bitmap index scan i would choose because of the large uh, large results i would choose a bitmap index scan i think it's more optimal here and it will get basically all the pages in case of a bitmap index scan it will mark all the pages that needs to fetch. So, okay, I need to fetch one, two, three, and seven row. Uh, I want to pull row one, 70, 300, 5,007. And all these, we're going to collect the pages, which is also stored in the index. And so it's, it translates to page seven, eight, uh, 2002, 301, and go and fetch all these pages. Boom. So you fetch all these pages again, they will be all over the place because it's not clustered, right? In this case, it's not clustered on B. Yeah, A is clustered, but B is not, right? So the table is not clustered on A. So it's going to be all over the place again. And we're going to fetch the results. And if in case of a bitmap index scan, we're going to refilter them and get the results. So I would think maybe... Postgres will be faster with a bitmap index scan. I might be wrong. But still, that's not the most efficient query regardless of the database, right? So let's go to the last one, which is select star from T, where A is between 50 and 50,000. Oh, that's the most beautiful thing. Because guess what? A is the primary key. A is clustered. And guess what? We're searching in a very range. So 50 to 50,000. So that is just a single scan to the primary key index, right? In case of MySQL, you're scanning that and brrr, you, get, you find the 50. And just when you find the 50, you're going to find everything because you go to the leaf and because it's a B plus three, you're going to find the next page, the next page. And guess what? You go to the next page, you found everything. Now you're going to the heap itself because the primary key is pointing to the heap pages eventually All right so you're gonna jump to, 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 and every page you jump to next is values you want because if you start with page 50 you're gonna find 50 50 50 50 and you're gonna find 51 52 53 50 you gotta be duplicates no there are no duplicates this is a primary key what do you what am i talking about so it'll be 50 51 52 53 and da, 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 70 right and then the next page 73 73 or 74 uh, so every page you jump and it's very fast 
up until you reach 49,000 and counting, and that's a single quick scan. And guess what? Because it's a primary key, the C and the B is in there because I'm doing select star. That has to be the fastest thing because I'm doing a single scan. It's a very efficient, it's a range scan. B plus three, love, absolutely love range scans, right? As long as a B plus, not B, just B3, right? And that, 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 that's awesome, right? So that's, that's gotta be it. As, at least I think, right? Thinking logically, you can test this all stuff. You can create a table and test it right now. Uh, in by in Postgres, uh, assuming um, in Postgres there is a clear s distinction, and I'm, I might be mistaken here. You can cluster Postgres. The problem with Postgres is cluster in postgres have to be done manually you have to call a cluster and more the inserts are never clustered if you cluster a table yeah it will be ordered around the index you picked but the moment you start inserting the ra is it random again postgres as far as i remember as last time i checked postgres 14 does not guarantee order in a in a table that you happen to cluster it won't it won't order anything so it's like, mm, i don't care or rather get fast right. I don't care about clustering. It's up to you. Okay? So you can quickly get out of sync <laughs> unless you cluster uh, periodically, which I believe also obtained uh, an exclusive lock. Clustering is a big operation, right? To order the rows into their own things. And this question went way beyond the time I allotted for it. So hope you enjoyed it, guys. Uh, that was kind of... Uh, I, I, li I like to tease apart these things. And let me know what I missed. And I absolutely love it. Uh, and you can throw in a lot of monkey wrenches here. What about a uh, column store versus column family versus row store? What happened in this case situation? The, vi the video will go for hours. We'll never finish. See you on the next one. Thank you so much.